Welcome back to the channel guys and after the success of the MGB engine uh, video that we released a year ago I've decided now to do an A series one um, so this is an 1100 A series out of a Morris Minor which is suffering with high oil consumption so my customer wants this basically built back to a completely standard engine he doesn't want a camera anything in it uh, he believes it to already have a lead free cylinder head um, in there so all we've got to do is strip it report on the damage um, fix it with good quality parts and build it back ready for him to tour Italy I think he does quite a quite a few journeys around France and Italy in it with his wife so I'm going to time lapse it coming apart and as it's coming apart if there's anything interesting in there I will uh, show you guys So straight away we found one problem, um, this rocker shaft has come loose slightly and the valve clearances are a little bit too much. So I'm going to make a note of that and we'll carry on stripping it. So that's the cylinder head off this 1100 A series Morris Minor and it's definitely not looking great. It's num number three on the spark plug is showing traces of oil but also it's it feels quite badly worn, number three. Definitely worse than number two. If I just turn the engine over a little. Number one's worn. So yes, number three is definitely the worst. And you can see on the cylinder head, if I zoom in on that a little bit, that's cylinder number four, and you can see the, it's definitely had oil in all of them, because this is carbon from burning oil. But number four, number two, and number one are still looking not a bad colour really, it's definitely oily, but, but number three has got a massive build-up of carbon, which is there, look, from, from it burning so much oil, and you can't see that, it looks like it's been running really bad as well, so, um, yeah, it was definitely in need of some attention. Take this gasket off. There's no real trace of the head gasket blowing, but it didn't come in for that, it was oil consumption. But then on top of the piston, there is real big flakes of, of carbon. There's another big flake. I mean, luckily the acid will take care of all this. The acid will just eat all this carbon and paint off it when we come to it. The one thing I want to check out on the piston is to see if this engine is oversized, if it's ever been down before. Straight away I can see a 30, so this has been bored out to plus 30, which means 30 thousandths of an inch. Right, I can see a massive problem here. And I'll show it you now. I mean, when we strip the engine it will show it up better, but basically on this cylinder number one if you can see here it's actually burnt through the piston or broke through the piston you can see the ring there so this must have really been running quite rough for it to do that i don't actually know what's caused it but we'll get the bottom end completely stripped now and uh and try and work out what's gone on there But yeah, it's definitely a tired engine. Uh, let's continue with the, put the camera down, let's continue with the teardown. Thank you. 
Uh, the next thing that I've noticed on this 1100 is someone has been here in here before and changed it from a a simplex, a single uh, timing chain to a duplex, a double timing chain. Uh, they've, silico they've siliconed all the front cover on and everything. There's nothing wrong with that. It's okay. Also, I'm replacing these cam followers anyway, but they're showing real bad corrosion and bits of pitting in there. So I should imagine the cam is also in as bad condition. So I'm going to save these to show to the customer. Well, that one, I'll leave that one out. What I'm also going to do is strip the rocker shaft. So to do that, we have to take off these split pins. So these are quite easy, just straighten up the bent over part of the split pin. And then it's sprung loaded. So we just pull back the spring and then wiggle out the pin like that. And then it's a washer, a spring, and then the followers start to come off. Now these are cast followers, but what I want to do is check for wear. This one's quite badly worn straight away. This is the first one we've come to. So these will either need replacing or I'll try and re-profile um, the follower. And then basically I'm going to strip them down then to see if it needs a new rocker shaft. So each one of these I'm going to inspect. And then I'm going to leave out one of them with the follower to show my customer when he turns up. And then I can only get the rocker shaft down as far as this next pedestal. And that's, that's because to stop the rocker shaft from rotating, because it has an oil feed in there. So if this only relied on the split pin, the rocker shaft could ro rotate and it has an oil feed in it. So to stop it from rotating, it has this little locking screw here. So we just loosen it off. A couple of turns and then basically that will come away from the rocker shaft so it locates in this show you it locates in that big hole there and it's just that and then basically it has a, a, a washer that goes over here that locks that into the right position to stop that from unwinding so this rocker shaft needs replacing as well. There's some bad bits of wear there, where the rockers are moving and they're cast iron on, on, the, on the shaft there. It just causes some accelerated wear. So the next thing I'm gonna take off is the nut that holds the camshaft pulley on.
So this is the A series all stripped down now. Um, the crankshaft, oops, the crankshaft mains and big ends have both been ground to ten thou. Uh, the mains are showing a like a slight bit of wear where it's a grooved bearing. I need to take some measurements from that, but the actual grind job looks quite good on it. Very good, in fact. Uh, the big ends, as long as they measure up to be okay, they will go again. The bores are worn. The cam bearings are worn, so it would need new cam bearings. But the main fault with the engine is on all of the pistons, actually. So the top ring is shattered and blown the piston up on all four. It's just absolutely made a complete mess of, uh, of them. So it's basically blew the crown of the piston away, worn away all the piston ring land, and then just blown it apart where the ring has shattered up into bits. It's then rattled around and caused it to blow through there. Um, so that's cylinder number four. Cylinder three, which is the bad one on the oil, that's actually um, done exactly the same thing. Hasn't broke through the top as bad as, as that cylinder. Um, but it, it's destroyed the piston ring land. I mean, there's actually two bits of ring stuck in one groove there. Then we've got cylinder two. Actually, no, sorry, that, that's one. That's two, this is three. Once again, it's the same, shattered the ring, blown the piston away on the ring land and on the top of the piston, but that was covered with this carbon, so you couldn't tell from the crown, but it's a mess just the same. And then this is cylinder four, which is actually the best one, but still top rings shattered. The piston ring land is, is broke up massively. So all these four pistons are scrap. And, and this is my customer's oil problem. I can't imagine it ran very well at all. Like that. The actual oil rail, this is a three piece ring. It has two rails and then the oil control in the middle, but the, the rails are worn down quite a lot on that piston too. Um, this is number one, which is the one that we spotted. Yeah, the same on the oil control here too. So there's a lot of swarf in the bottom of the sump, so we're going to have to clean that out before it goes into the acid. The next job for me is to get rid of all the gaskets uh, that are left on the engine because it's all siliconed up. I'll remove the core plugs and I'll remove the oil gallery bungs, uh, but I'm going to wait for my customer to come first just to go through everything with him. Um, then remove all the core plugs, gallery bungs, and then start the cleaning process if he wants to go ahead with the job. Yeah. So the engine's all stripped. I've taken the core plugs right. out, and what I'm doing now is taking the oil gallery bungs. So everything's off the engine now. I've taken the core plugs out. I've started taking the valves out to see if we've got any guide wear. The head has been already converted to lead free. I'm gonna skim the head face. And then before it goes in the acid, I'm taking the oil gallery bungs out as well as the core plugs. So like I say, the core plugs are out. And what I've done is I've drilled an hole in the first oil gallery bung. And that basically, the oil gallery runs all the way along this engine and it's drilled at the back side as well. And then from there, it's then drilled down into the oil galleries and that's how it feeds the rest of the engine. So to make sure it's all nice and clean, I've just got this bit of bar. If I put the camera down. And I use this bit of bar for MGBs and minis. Or A series, I should say. Solid in there. 
we go. It's just starting to go now. And that's the oil gallery bung out the other side. And then this side, which is mushroomed over, I then put back through here and then use the mushroom part <coughs> to hit the one out that's been drilled. Like that. So that way now, when it goes in the acid, the acid can flow all the way through and just clean out this oil gallery because normally that gets filled up with like a real gooey old engine oil, which is a mess. So I'm going to quickly rip the rest of the springs out and then all of the engine parts can go into the acid. So I'm currently reconditioning the valves for the Morris Minor. I've shot blasted them and polished the stems already. So the next thing that I'm doing is giving them a quick reface. So that's all of the inlet and exhaust valves shot blasted, the stems polished and the valves refaced. What I'm going to do now is just very carefully just top the top of the valves. That's only to give it a new mating face for the rocker arms. Um, they don't look bad actually, they're in quite good condition but I'm going to set the machine up and just give them a quick, a quick lick across the top anyway. valve seat cutting time on the Morris Minor. Because this engine is completely standard I'm not gonna put a three angle seat on it I'm just going straight in with a 45 degree seat as long as it's not massive I'm gonna um, I'll be happy to leave it at that. So the first thing I'm doing is clamping the cylinder head down and while I'm setting the machine up I'm visually looking to see if I could see any hairline cracks or anything like that which I can't this all looks pretty good to be fair and then I've got to find the right pilot that fits in the guide good that was a bit too tight that's the one that's perfect and then this head has already had lead free seats fitted, I think I said that earlier um, so that saved me a job and saved my customer a chunk of money and then so this is a three angle seat cutter so it's got one two three angles and the one that I'm going to use is just a straight 45 degree And then I'm going to centralise the machine, make sure it's nice and tight on here. We'll start off with the inlets. Uh, so what I'm doing now is letting the machine centralise. As soon as the Centronic base unit lets me know that it's centralised okay, that beeping that you've just heard means it's missed the centre. So we're going to have to try again on that. Like the Vera drive because it's such a small seat I can actually speed the Vera drive up it shouldn't suffer with any kind of chatter that you sometimes get with a large seat that's the first one done And then what we're going 
get one of each valve. Uh, ready to just see where they sit out and make sure we get enough vacuum on the, the seat to make sure that there's a good seal. But we'll do the vacuum test downstairs. Yeah, you see that one there, it's actually cutting off centre, which also kind of explains why some of the valves was facing off centre. Because over a period of time, if the valve has been used to running on a seat that isn't like round or true, the valve can actually beat itself in and just keep moving to one side slightly. And after a period of time, the valve will wear to that. So I'm going to get these finished and then I'll show you the finished, um, the finished seat on these and then we'll be over to the head skimmer where we're going to reface this. Uh, and what I might do is I might just break the edge of this because this can cause a hot spot which can cause pre-ignition. Um, so if I just neatly round that off, not enough to alter the compression too much, but enough to get rid of that sharp edge, that, that will help with the running of it. And in fact, what you can see here, I don't know if the GoPro is picking it up, but it's actually discolored. It's, uh, it's sort of blacky brown here, and then it goes all rainbow colored where the, where the heat has traveled from this very tip of the heart shape in the combustion chamber there the heat is traveled down here and that's basically because of this getting hot so if we just break this edge back round slightly in fact i'll show you with a sharpie once again like i said this head this engine is completely standard they don't want it modifying in any in any way uh, so this is just a little trick just to help with the running of it but i'm just going to break the edge around there slightly just round that off and that should help massively and then where it's been skimmed before there's a real sharp edge all the way around so I'm just gonna neatly just break the edge of that as well but I'll show you once I've once I've skimmed it I'll show you what I do so one job that I've just done on this breather chest for the Morris Minor is to just separate this pipe off it just to see if there was anything caught in here because I doubt that in all the years that this vehicle's been on the road that this thing has ever been cleaned out so um, it took a bit of getting off but it's off now and as you can see it is caked so it's a really good job that we've uh, got this thing apart I mean you can't really see in there but when I hold that up to the light even that has got a ton of crap in it so what i'll do is i'm gonna i'll put some tissue down and we'll see what we get out of it i don't know where i'm gonna put tissue down because this place is heaving uh, this a series has a breather on the rocker cover through the filler cap and this breather these are the only two breathers in there so this is going to be quite interesting just to see what comes out of here camera's picking that up but this is the only the pipe so far I think what I'm going to need to grab is some wire or an old bit of dipstick or something to get in there better now it probably isn't going to be too bad in this first part of this but it's as it goes around the bend where you'll probably find the most build up of all the oil and carbon. Yeah, what I need now is some wire to get around the bend. Let me find some wire. I mean, the one thing I will say is I can actually feel this, how clogged up it is. It 
so I think there's still a fair bit in there to be honest but I mean look it's coming out in big lumps um, so I'm gonna have to I think let that soak in some chemical and and try and uh, keep jet washing it out um, because I don't think with wire I can get all the way around there and it still feels quite heavy I mean it's a lot lighter than what it was but I want everything out of there so I'm going to put some chemical in it let that soak in overnight and see what that removes so I don't know if you can see the smoke but we're still cleaning out the breather on the miner um, we've just warmed it up and the biggest chunk of oil and carbon and dirt has come out of it so um, let's see if any more comes out Burning still in there. Yeah. Look at that. Try that thing. Oh wow. Yeah, boiling in there. Yeah. Oh, I got a pig. Yeah, it's still flying. <laughs> Sam's now turned it into charcoal. Burn it out. the other way as well. Can't be a lot left in there now. I'll just put some over so they don't on the ceiling. Oh wow. I think it's all gone now. Right. I think it's all out now. We need to get all the dirt off the floor and everything. Uh, I'm going to go and jet wash that out now. But yeah, I think we've got that pipe unblocked now. But I should imagine that was definitely one of the problems with this little miner. The cylinder head is now refaced. The seats have been recut. I've cleaned the gasket faces up. I've reconditioned the valves. So I'm just going to put this in for final wash. So the first thing that I'm just going to do is just deeper all the push rod holes, all the oil holes and the water holes, the stud holes. I'm just going to deeper along the edge just to get rid of the sharp edges. And then I'm just going to break the edge of this sharp heart shape combustion chamber here. I'm going to just deeper all around the combustion chamber, but I'm just going to lose this edge as well because this is a, an, an area that causes pre-ignition. This bit gets quite hot and uh, causes pre-ignition. So if I round that off, that will, that will help that massively. So to do that, I'm just gonna use um, this battery powered die grinder. This is a Snap-on Tools one. It's uh, a 7.2 volt. They're really good actually. Um, this is brushless one. I've got a carbide bit in there so all I'm going to do is just really carefully steady my hand on the cylinder head and then just round off round here I'm not putting a lot of pressure on it and I'm keeping it moving all the time I mean, anyone that's worried about the compression loss of me taking a bit of metal out of there, I've taken next to nothing out of there and I've actually skimmed off the cylinder head 15th hour to get it flat. So I should imagine uh, it would be roughly where it was, but because the engine is completely standard, we're not too worried about that. This is not a race performance engine at all. This is just a, a classic Morris Miner, um, but that will help with a bit of pre-ignition, hopefully. So what I'm going to do with that now is put it through the cleaner and then take it out and paint it. That's the miner head now with a nice coat of BMC green on it. So I'll just pull off the masking tape and then go round with some thinners all the, round, all the way around the, the edge so it doesn't 
have any uh, like paint high spots on it for the gasket. Just there, I can see one. So we'll turn that upside down, uh, sorry, the right way up and uh, get the, the valves and springs and get the cylinder head built up ready for the bottom end. I've refaced the block face. It was actually out, similar to the cylinder head actually. It was around here. Um, so what I'm gonna do now is hone it to size. I'm gonna take it over the other side, get it in the honing tank, de-rust the block, then it's in for final wash, fit the core plugs and the gallery bungs, give it a coat of paint, and then assembly. Oh, set of cam bearings actually. Cam bearings, I don't know if the camera, I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but they're, they're quite badly scuffed, so I'm gonna replace them. So yeah, it's, uh, it's getting close. So the, uh, the Morris block has now been bored, honed, and I'm going to change the cam bearings, de-rust all the block, clean the gasket faces up, and then that's going to go in the wash for an hour or two. Uh, and then we need to core plug it, gallery bung it, and, uh, and build it, paint it and build it. So the first thing, what I'm doing now is, is with a wire wheel on a drill, just going all through the block, just getting any flaky rust and old paint off. It's been through the acid, so there's not really a lot on there. But the acid doesn't remove like the build-up of rust so the wire wheel will get right into the corner so when we put core plugs in it we know we're going to get a good seal and then i'm replacing the camshaft bearings as well because the center one is quite badly worn and so is the front the back one's not so bad but if i'm putting uh if i'm putting two in it i might as well just replace the lock so the cam bearings are done I'm knocking the core plugs in at the minute and I thought I would just show you the different types of core plugs uh, because this is a saucer type. So you get a normal cupped type core plug which is like that and it's got a slight taper to it and then you just clean up the block or the cylinder head wherever it fits uh, and, and knock that in. And then the second type is a saucer type and these you clean up say in the block in the corners fit a ceramic fit them that way and then you basically hit them till they're flush so like that there and that's what you can see that white stuff is the ceramic so I'm just finishing this one off and then this can go on the engine stand or the rear ones in and that's the oil gallery bung. So I've still got to repair this. So I've got the A series on the stand. We actually got this stand the other day off one of our um, customers who's become a, a workshop friend, Chris. So he uh, he come in and said, I've got the perfect thing for an A series. So we brought that off him, which has made building these a bit easier. We normally build them on the side with my um, engine blocks, which I'll show you then actually because these are pretty good what I had made so I had another friend of mine turn me up a load of these so I've got all different threads and then these just screw into the bottom of the blocks and there's enough clearance on them for the crank to turn so these are really handy when building smaller engines in fact there's a Toyota Starlet engine with a setting at the minute um, anyway, yeah, so the uh, the miners now on the engine stand uh, We're running ACL bearings in this so I've degreased the whole engine cleaned the bores out completely to get any other um, Machining honing Tiny bits of swarf out of the cross hatch in the uh, in the bores. Sorry. I'm not concentrating here I'm Doing two things at once. Uh, so it's all degreased now, new cam bearings in it. 
I've put the lower set of bearings in it. The crank was already ground to 1010 and it was actually in quite good condition. So all I've done is polish the journals on that. Uh, it's got ACL bearings in it. I've gone and cleaned up all the caps and uh, now I'm just wiping off the packaging grease off the, the other three bearings. We're putting a whole new lock tab set in this, plus we're putting new head studs in it. Uh, I'm putting new head studs in it because there was all odds and sods when we stripped it and I just don't, I don't want it to have bits and bobs in it so I was just going to replace the lock um, and then new lock tabs just because I don't like it when you can see when they've been used and reused unless we have to. So um, I'm going to now bolt the, the main caps on, torque that up, turn the engine over and then gap the piston rings, fit the pistons to the rods and build the bottom end completely. Another thought, thing that I thought I would show you that we do on all engines is <clears throat> really inspect the main caps really well and the big end caps. But we also make sure that there's no burrs along these, these edges because if there is, when you put the bearing in, if there's a burr, the bearing won't sit flush or perfectly in the cap and it will cause a high spot which will cause a tight engine or it will cause rapid bearing wear which obviously we don't want. So uh, the other thing is the thrust washers. There's a correct and an incorrect way to fit thrust washers. They can be fitted anyway. But the back of the thrust washer is steel and the front is copper so or copper bronze. So we need to uh, make sure that when the thrusts are fitted, the oil groove and the copper bronze is always pointing towards the crank. So when the clutch is pressed, it could just, just touch that and it won't cause any issues. If you fit them um, that way, when you press the clutch, the thrust face of the crank will hit the steel of the thrust washer and it will cause a disaster. It will just rapidly wear, the thrust will fall out and all sorts of things can happen. So um, yeah, that's one thing to always make sure if you're building your own engine, the thrusts are fitted the right way. It's quite easy with the bottom thrusts. You can always have a quick visual inspection because you'll see the two oil grooves as well. So I've got the crank in, I've just got to torque it up. I've got the camshaft in. I've primed all the oil pump, which is underneath here, because uh, I've got the engine sitting that way at the moment. So I've primed, I've actually broke all the burrs away inside the oil pump, primed it with build lube. That's all moving oil nice. This is the camshaft thrust plate. So this basically, this engine plate bolts to the block, locates with these two countersunk screws here, and then this camshaft thrust plate, we tighten this up and then when we tighten the cam up, it, it nips up on the actual, sorry, the cam pulley, the, the, the boss of the cam pulley nips up and that's what gives us the end float on the camshaft. So I'll show that in a minute. But at the moment, we've just got to do the thrust plate up. So these are, everything on this is imperial. So these are 7 sixteenths in size. And the, the thread is a quarter UNF. So I'm going to nip them up first and then I'll torque them up as well, just so we know that they're nice and even. And then what I do before I do nip everything up, I locate some of the screws that go in there, although I'm going to replace them with new ones. If I just put two of them, in here it just means that the plate is positioned correctly so I'm using these as almost like locating dowels like that So one thing that I've just spotted on the minor engine is the gear run out. Um, what made me check this was I noticed that there was no shims on the nose of the crank and normally A series and B series run a few shims here to get this gear to sit right. 
So what I've done is I've put the camshaft gear on and nipped it up. I've put the crankshaft gear on and made sure it's sitting flush there. And then I've measured with a steel ruler, which is up here somewhere. So I'll measure across there and then obviously down onto the crankshaft gear to see what the gap is. And it's 40 thou. So we've got to get that run out right. So at the minute I'm going to go and have a look on the nose of some old cranks that I've got and see if we can find some shim material just to get that thing bang on. So that's the run out set now with a little shim underneath the crankshaft gear. The next thing I'm doing is just checking the end flow on the camshaft because we don't want that to be tight. So there we go, we've got four and a half thousandths there. If I push a bit harder, we get it up to five. So that's more than enough, that's perfect in fact. I put a new lock washer in there, so I'm gonna bend that over, torque up the main caps, bend these new lock washers over, and then start to put the new pistons in. I put one in just to set the cam time in. So all the little, basically there's a little line on the camshaft and a little line on the crankshaft wheel. Let me just move that around a bit. Let's get it set right. So there we go. That's that little dot there and the little line scribed onto the crankshaft gear. <clears throat> Once again, there's no, I don't need to put a vernier on this and set the time in like on a race engine because it is a completely standard Morris Minor. So we're all good on that front. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna bend the lock tab over and we'll get the pistons in. So I'm just checking the piston ring gap on this and they're quite tight actually. So it's a good job of testing it. Even though it's a standard engine, we always check the ring gaps. So I'm gonna open this up a few thou just to give it a bit more and we'll have a remeasure. Pistons are in and torqued up, timing's done, cylinder head's built, and uh, it's, it's, on the, it's on the block, it's not obviously uh, bolted up yet. So what I'm doing now is building up the new rocker shaft, and I've bought a set of new rockers for it as well, which are in there. So I'm gonna have to just check that they uh, don't need honing. Um, so I'll, uh, I'll oil up or we'll put build lube down the lifter bores um, to protect them on initial start up, fit the lifters, fit the push rods, start to get the rocker, uh, rocker gear built up and then go through the tappet clearance. And the last thing I've got to do, which I was waiting for uh, the, the right sump gasket to turn up for it, um, which is here. Uh, is bolt the sump on and um, the mine is getting very close to uh, being complete. So I'm not very happy with the bottom pulley bolt on the miner. It's had a chisel on it at some stage. I've just wire wheeled all the rust off it but what I'm going to do to tidy it up is just go round these rough edges on my Linishing wheel. Just to try and take all the high spots off before I paint it. And then the other job that I'm doing is I've bought some new rockers for it, uh, but they're not a finished size. So, oh, I'll put the rocker shaft somewhere. Ah, oh, there's the rocker shaft. Because the original rockers, let me find the original rockers. So this is an original rocker that doesn't run a bush, it's just cast. And when you fit this onto the rocker shaft, which is here, it, it wobbles around a fair bit and I want to try and get all that valve movement out. There's no bush in them, so I've ordered new rockers with a bush and then as you can see, it won't fit. 
So I'll just resize it on the Delapina. And then we're going to finish linishing this and give it a coat of paint. So I've set my sun up. Basically I've got it where the rocker can just ride on this bar here. And then I'm going to set up the pressure on the stone. And then what happens if I switch this off? What happens with this is there's a foot pedal down here. And when you push the foot pedal, it basically pushes out the stone, which allows it to hone. So what I want is pressure like that. I can't move that, but I can when I've taken the foot pedal off. don't want to do is try and do it in one hit I'm trying to make it where it's a really nice snug fit so I'm just going to keep taking little bits out of it until it fits on the rocker shaft real nice still tight that fits but it's still a little bit tight what I want is I want that to just fall really off its own weight so I think just one more flip up and down and we'll be there play there yeah I'm happy with that it's a good job so seven more to do there we go so that's the rocker shaft completely reconditioned new rocker shaft, all of the posts have been washed through, wire wheeled, um, new rockers, I've resized the bushes, uh, built it back up, new split pins, and that's ready to be fitted. Looking pretty. Well, that's the minor, I'd say 90% there now. I've uh, replaced the bolts going around the timing cover and a few other places. <coughs> um, I've put new cylinder head stud and nuts in, new rocker cover, bolts and spacers, um, new cap to make it look nice, two new stickers, which are the right ones for the year. I'm just waiting for the ring gear now. I'm going to pull this insert out next, put the back plate on, uh, put a new insert in it before I put the back plate on uh, and then I'm just waiting for the ring gear for the flywheel uh, and then it's got to come off the engine stand and then it needs the oil filter housing putting on and, and uh, it has a pipe that feeds to here so I'm going to have to just clean off the paint along there as well and then just do a couple more checks on it and we're there so I've just opened up a little delivery from a company called East Sussex Miners for the Morris Miner engine. A big shout out to them. Uh, for, for the minor parts, these are the places, this is the place to get hold of. They've supplied all brand new manifold, cylinder head to manifold, stud and nuts, new thermostat housing with thermostat, um, oil filter, flywheel lock tabs, set spark plugs, and uh, bypass hose. 
Oh no, the bypass hose come from Moss actually. Um, a new water pump actually. They put they supplied a new water pump. <clears throat> so and the ring gear because we were struggling to get the right ring gear. So big shout out to them. Anybody needing minor parts, we recommend them. The next thing on the minor is to replace the ring gear. So I thought I'd show how I do that. Um, what I do is just drill an hole that lines up with the inner part of the gear and where it just about touches the flywheel. And then you see it crack down the bottom. And then basically all it needs after that is a slight tap. up which um trying to hold the gopro and do that at the same time is a bit tricky but there we go and basically what it does when you tap it it just splits it ready to take off so I'm going to clean up around here and then we're going to heat the ring gear up and then it, uh, the new ring gear that is and then it'll uh, fit onto the uh, flywheel and then it'll shrink when it cools down and grip the flywheel. That's the Morris Mine all finished. Me and Sam are going to load it into the back of the transit now and deliver it to our customers or customer. Uh, it's a local husband and wife that um, have been doing a few jobs to the, to the Morris. So I'll give you a quick rundown of the spec. It come in with a heavy breathing problem. So we stripped it. Noticed that the pistons was worn or broken actually. Um, my customer had had a, <coughs> a fair bit of work done on this actually. It had the bottom end line honed already. It had had the crank ground at some point. Um, so that was all in good condition. So we've put new cam bearings in it, debunged it, decor plugged it, it's gone through the acid, we've polished the crank, reboard it, decked the surface. It already had lead free seats in it, so we've just cut the seats, we've refaced the valves, polished the stems, it's got new head studs in it, and we've placed we've I've replaced all of the hardware, nuts and bolts. Uh, we've put nuts and bolts throughout it just to um, tidy it up and make it look good and uh, it had all odd ones on it as well which I wasn't happy with we've replaced the Morris stickers and the Westlake sticker on the top new oil filler cap like I say all, crew, all the new chrome hardware new water pump thermostat and thermostat housing uh, I freed off all this actually this pipe was all seized so I've taken all this apart freed it all off Put a new oil pressure switch in it for him, new spark plugs, and yeah. Oh, um, as you've seen on the video, this breather was severely blocked. We've supplied him with new spacers and uh, brass nuts for the manifold, and then we've removed and fitted a new ring gear to it, and that's it. It's all ready for us to drop back off tonight. Hopefully they'll be really happy with it. It looks uh, looks really good. Just get it under the light a bit more. So thanks to uh, Nevlock for supplying eighty percent of the parts in this engine. Uh, we've had a few bits from Moss and then. Uh, East Sussex Minor Club for the rest of the the parts which our customer actually told us about um, so thanks to all those guys for supplying the parts for that and uh, see you on the next video